Well, it was that was a little sacrifice that we could offer up to find a warm church for our August 1st Friday Mass. Then I was thinking of some of the different, very edifying examples of a willing spirit of sacrifice that today's saint in Alphonsus show. One of the ones that always stays with me and struck me most of all, but there are a lot, not to, uh, not to make us think that saints are impossible, but to remind us that, yeah, you could do a little something in your own daily life along those lines. For example, when he, when he was an old man, he was doubled over with arthritis. He's a patron saint of those who suffer from arthritis. And his, he had a curvature of the spine. So his chin actually bent down into his chest. And he couldn't, he couldn't stand up straight. And the chin rubbed against the chest. So it was always sore, and very often there was kind of a, a wound there, which obviously must have hurt very, very much. And that was part of the circumstances why, as an old man in the 80s and 90s, he couldn't offer mass anymore and had to be taken care of. Well, on a day like we're having today, it was extremely hot. The lay brother who was in charge of bringing his, his meals, who was not shall we say, the most attentive of nurses by any means, brings him his tray as usual and plops it down. And then because it's so warm, the saint asks the brother, and mind you, he founded the order when he was a bishop, the saint asks the brother, could I have a glass of, a little bit of water, please? Just a little bit of water. And so the brother thinks, huh. And he looks around, and there's a vase. Someone had, a visitor had brought some flowers to the bishop several days before. And the water was all sort of, you know, murky and green and moldy and everything. And the brother took the, flock, the dead flowers out of the vase and plopped it down in front of the bishop. And he drank it because that was the kind of a saint that he was. That perhaps is a little bit extreme. Uh, but the arthritis thing is interesting, isn't it? There's always a patronage, heavenly patronage for all of our woes and our sufferings. He did make a vow never to waste a moment's time. And of course, he was very scrupulous, so he kept the vow. He produced in his lifetime 60 volumes that he wrote. It was all written out by hand. He had, he had a good library, obviously, but um, it was a tremendous undertaking. And at the same time, he was founding a religious order and carrying on controversies with the heretics and dealing with the government and the Pope and always suffering for those reasons. And um, he had headaches, too. So there's this picture of him. The, the idea back then was a good way to get rid of headaches was to press a piece of white marble to your forehead. And so he would sit at his desk writing with his right hand and with the left hand this piece of white marble press to his forehead, and he wrote, and he wrote, and he wrote. His magnificent works, the most beautiful, is one which is so accessible, and I recommend it all to, all, all, to all of you to read from time to time, read it over again, read a bit of it, The Glories of Mary. That's one of those books you could open up anywhere and read something with profit. And you'll need, you don't really need to read a lot, even just a little bit, The Glories of Mary. It fills you with confidence for the salvation of souls, and the tenderness and the power of Queen of Heaven, the Virgin Mary. The other suffering that he went through was not a suffering of the mouth or the feet or, or the head, but was a suffering really of his own heart. He had he founded the, the Redemptorists because there were so many priests in Naples, the big city in south of Rome, 18th century, so many priests. But the people in the countryside, the peasants, the farmers, were absolutely neglected. No one worried about them. Uh, no one taught them catechism, showed them how to go to confession, anything like that. So the Redemptorists were to preach to and help out the forgotten poor people of the countryside. Well, the order was established, but he had to deal with church authorities and the authorities of the government at that time the government claimed total power over every small detail of church life. He certainly founding a religious order. And the Naples was governed by a king. The Freemasons were pretty much in charge. 
and a man called Pancrati was a religion minister. And he, he, he persecuted St. Alphonsus for the whole of his life. Did whatever he could to block it one way and another. Well, the religious order was founded. There was then there had to be a, a series of separate uh, permissions that would come from the Pope in Rome. That was a different country. That was the Papal States, and Naples was its own country. And you had to go back and forth and be very, very diplomatic. Well, as he got older, some of his priests thought he was just an old fool, and they would make fun of him. And then they would, he could barely hear towards the end, of course, they would get him to sign things that he had no intention of signing because they lied to him. And, they, and then they would say, yes, we told you this, Father. Don't you remember? We told you about it. Well, that sort of thing. And at the end, some of his priests revolted against him and denounced him to the Pope in Rome so that he was thrown out of the order that he himself had founded. Imagine the suffering that this saint went through. Yet he offered these things all up joyfully because he loved our Lord so much. He is famous for saying, if you want to avoid sin, if you want to overcome any kind of temptation, there's three solutions, there's three. What are they, Father? Prayer, prayer, and prayer. Those three. And he said, prayer, such as we're having tonight, brave little bad Christian soldiers, Prayer before the Blessed Sacrament is the most powerful prayer of all. He insisted on that. And then at the same time, of course, the devotion to Our Lady was scapular and her rosary. Prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. You won't necessarily have the same situation as St. Alphonsus, but you'll certainly have the sufferings that you have to face. In a warm church on a Friday night will probably be the least of them actually. But it is edifying to think of what the saints did. The same we had the other day, Ignatius of Loyola, founder of the Jesuits, who were once a great religious order of the church. Remember, he got his start by reading the lives of the saints. He, his leg was broken in a, got hit by a cannonball in a, a military campaign against the French, and had to be reset twice, rebroken and then reset, because it hadn't, it hadn't set properly. And during his long, long convalescence, he had nothing to read but uh, the Golden Legend by uh, James de Varagine, the Dominican father, the bishop, the story of the lives of the saints. And he read them, and he was just entranced with them. And he said to himself, if they did it, why can't I? That's a good question, right? Your circumstances will be entirely different with that same spirit of a willing sacrifice, the joyful love of our Lord, that has to remain the same. Here is the furnace. Here is, you think it's hot in the church, just think of the furnace of divine love that glows from the tabernacle and from the monstrance at Mass tonight. God bless you. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.